as a Linux user, or maybe even like a long-term Unix user, you understand intrinsically that wheel group means admin. It's just something that we do in the Unix world. There's no additional thought that really needs to go into it. But step back for a moment and just think about the term wheel group. Why do we use the term wheel? That doesn't make any sense. Well, when you don't have a clear indication like with Linux, for example, a lot of people are going to have their own pet theories over the years. For example, I erroneously thought that wheel group had something to do with wheel printers. This is some form of printing technology that I don't understand how it works, but that's what that is. I always thought it's because these users are allowed to take the wheel. They're allowed to control the ship and direct where it goes. I can't remember which BSD book it was in, but one of them mentioned that Wheel was a reference to Knights of the Round Table, not a single admin user, but a shared equal privilege. My childhood was a lie. For some reason, I have memory of reading that Wheel was from Wheelhouse, as in the place where only navigators would have access, and I do not see that one in the downvoted Stack Exchange answers. But my personal favourite is this one from the FreeBSD mailing list. Because as we know, if something is posted on a mailing list, it is truth, it is gospel, nobody ever lies on a mailing list. Does anyone know why the wheel group is called wheel? I mean, why not admins or something like that? Wheel certainly is a cryptic name for the administrators group. Does anyone have any idea why it's called wheel? The guy who wrote the group functionality was both a Buddhist and a Journey fan. He was listening to Wheel in the Sky while trying to figure out a way to give more people administrative rights without giving too much access. In a fit of enlightenment, he came up with a special group for administrators. Since they were the ones who kept things turning, it only seemed appropriate that Wheel be immortalized in the Etsy slash group file. True story. A true story that people over on Reddit just bought and thought was actually what happened, which the guy later in the thread just admitted I was joking around. It was not true. Now, here's the problem with the term. It actually predates not only Linux, but it predates Unix. We are talking 1967. There was an operating system called TOPS 10, the time-sharing Total Operating System 10, written by Digital Equipment Corporation, which ran on the PDP-10 derived from an OS made for a prior system called the PDP-6. If you know a lot about video game history, this system might sound very familiar, because this is where the very first MUD was made, Multi-User Dungeon, which later became the foundation for what we know today as the MMORPG. But as a more general techie thing, there was also a program there called Forum, which perhaps is the very first chat room. Both of those are a story for a whole separate video though. Now, the top 10 operating system running on the PDP-10 is not the system that the term wheel came from, but we need to know about it to know about the system it inspired. So, in the late 1960s, a company by the name of BBN Bolt Baranac and Newman Inc., now going by Raytheon BBN, purchased several PDP-10s, but found that the top 10 operating system was... kinda lacking. But the problem is a lot of software was made for top 10s. So they couldn't just go and make a whole new operating system without building all of this extra software as well. So to avoid deprecating all of that software, they made an emulation library to run that existing software on top of a new operating system. And from there went on to create another operating system for this hardware called 10 Extended, maybe better known as 10X. Now this included some crazy features like virtual memory. Programs could access the full 18-bit memory address space and do so at the same time as other programs. <sighs> Mind blown. What a crazy bit of tech. At the time, actually was really cool though. Along with a bunch of other features that really made it outperform what TOPS 10 was capable of, plus having that emulation library, 
meant you could just bring your top 10 software over, so very quickly, it started to dominate the PDP-10 market. As time moved on, these PDP-10 systems were being upgraded, they were becoming faster, a relative term, they are dead slow compared to what we have just in our pocket today, and it became very clear that what 10x was doing wasn't the best we could get out of this hardware, and there is more that can be done. So eventually a company known as DEC purchased the rights to 10x, and they wanted to rename the system and, you know, bring it up to snuff with what's going on now. Now, with their renaming, this led to some missteps, we'll say. They originally wanted to call it Virus, V-I-R-O-S, the Virtual Memory Operating System. There's an M in the middle there that they just didn't feel like using. This led to customers being really confused and asking questions about it, so they changed the name to Snark, so they could just pretend like Virus never existed. Eventually, Snark was reversed and changed to Crans, until they quickly realised that Crans means funeral wreath in Swedish. So, that's probably not the best idea to go with. But ultimately settled on the name Tops. 20, which meant that nobody at the time actually called it that, because it's a rename of 10x to TOPS20, let's use the 20 in the name 10x, let's call it 20x. Going back a bit to the 10x system, on here there was a privilege bit that allows the possessor to perform any restricted operation on a time-sharing system, such as read or write any file on the system regardless of protections, change or look at any address in the running monitor, crash or reload the system, and kill or create jobs and user accounts. This bit was called the wheel bit, and you change it by using the wheel program. So, the state of being in a privileged login with the wheel bit set was sometimes called wheel mode. This trend continued into TOPS 20, Xerox IFS, and some of those people undoubtedly were involved in the initial creation of Unix. So, the term then started to propagate into the newly developing Unix world. Whilst that does answer the question of where, it doesn't answer the question of who or why. Well, here's where things get really, really hazy. Nobody seems to know exactly who came up with the name Wheel. We know it's from 10x. That we know for a fact. And we know it was on 20x, and we know it was on Xerox IFS, and we know that it made its way into Unix but we don't know the individual who actually did it. So, unless somebody has a time machine and we can go back to the 70s when 10x was actually being made and just ask around the office, the best bet we have is rely on people that were present in the very early days of Unix. And the best option to go with here is Eric S. Raymond, who for some reason decided he wanted to maintain a Unix jargon file, a file that just includes random Unix terminology. Two of those terms that are hosted online today are the wheel bit and also wheel. So Eric S. Raymond says it's from the slang big wheel for a powerful person. This is not a term you'll hear being used in most daily conversation unless you're talking to someone who's like 80 years old. But there is a Wiktionary page for it. A person with a great deal of power or influence, especially a high-ranking person in an organization. Similar to Big Cheese, Big Enchilada, Big Kahuna, things like that. She's a big wheel at IBM. This is even a horribly ancient example, which kind of fits the time, to be honest. However, there is an episode of The Simpsons where you'll hear Millhouse using the term. Think of the term like the big wheel on a penny farthing or the big wheel on a tricycle. The big wheel's kind of the most important one. Now this is still very much speculation by Eric S. Raymond's part, but this is probably the best source we have. 
I don't think any of the other explanations really make sense, and nobody from around the time really brings them up. Eric is pretty much the only one who has an explanation, so unless somebody comes out that says something else, this is the one that I'm going to say is probably the truth, if not the truth, at least the common theory of the time. And sadly, unlike the early Linux discussions, these haven't been digitized, so actually finding any logs pretty much is impossible at this point. So let me know. Maybe you have a better explanation. Maybe you actually were there when the dinosaurs were alive and you have the actual explanation. If you do, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Veripay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and I am the biggest of all the wheels.